Hello, this is Hacker Devine, and I am here with a special entity that has invaded the back rooms. We will I will go over what they are in a minute. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And I am very aware that I am late once again. Hmm. <sighs> Video times are going to be a little bit sporadic from here on because I really don't feel like doing scheduled uploads anymore and I want to do these every day without scheduling them days or even weeks in advance. Anyway, let's get right into this. The humans. Entity number one. Habitats is the front rooms. The plague of the back rooms have invaded them and who are the original entity. Entity 1 is us humans. As you already know, there is no human equal to another. Therefore, putting a physical description is impossible. However, we agree that we have a skeleton, a brain, functional organs, muscles, skin, and most importantly, wisdom. Not really. We know what we do, how we do it, and when we do it. No, we don't. However, why are we Entity 1? Easy. We should not be here. We already have our own place in existence. However, we have come this far, uh, and as I have already said, this should not be so. We are an anomaly, so to speak. An error that, like a snowball rolling down a hill, has been growing, and we are more and more here. If we... We're not here, the entities would not be aggressive, nor would we have to see them. But here we are, destabilizing the natural order of this place. Behaviors. We act prudently. Each thing we see and or learn here, we add it to this file. We tell it to others and thus we ensure our survival above all entities. This has always been the case, both in the front rooms and in the back rooms. Biology. We are all different. We come in all shapes, colors, sizes, and thicknesses. We are humans, after all. Discovery. From our point of view, we didn't discover it until the creation of this file. However, all entities, passive, aggressive, neutral. They all discovered us. They all see us as a threat. Therefore, some simply evade us, others simply ignore us, and others attack us. They know what we are capable of, how far we can go. Do's and don'ts. Do. Help each other unconditionally. Stick together. Don't kill each other or innocent beings. Don't fall into the wretched cycle. Don't lose hope. Well, that's not enough to make a video off of. So, there's more. We're going to read about the front rooms. Actually, I think I already did. Not on the site, but we I already read about this. So, we're going to go to a random page of this wiki. Loading random page. Entity 95. Reality bugs. Is this... It's blonde! Wow, I was not... I was not expecting that. Dang, blonde is just gonna keep on, on, on following us around here, isn't she? Okay. So we meet again, dear readers. I see you seem interested in my research on these little fellas. Very well then, I'll share it with you. Reality bugs take the appearance of small, iridescent animals, bearing plenty of resemblance to the Hercules beetle, a species of rhinoceros beetle native in the rainforests of Central America, uh, South America, and the Lesser. And tell us, the largest measured specimen 
and were seven centimeters long, not a accounting for their horns. Habitat. These adorable little oh, bugs. The little fellas can be found in a myriad of levels, but a full list of levels they inhabit is still unknown. They seem to be quite the common sight around the back rooms. Biology. As mentioned before, reality bugs bear resemblance to the Hercules beetle. As such, they also feature six legs, wings, a light, a litra, and on the males, a sizable horn, in some cases reaching four centimeters. Sexual dimorphism is also quite prevalent, with female bugs being noticeably smaller, not to mention their lack of horn and different elytra coloration. However, unlike their front ribs counterpart, that seems to feed mostly on fruit, reality bugs have shown a rather unique diet. They feed on the fabric of reality itself, where research is necessary to understand the means by which reality bugs digest their food. It is also though unknown how or why Reality bugs move through levels in search of food. Behavior They are usually harmless, even in swarms, and never display hostile behavior towards wanderers or entities, unless two swarms are involved in a territory or your own dispute, or their nests are threatened. Due to their diet, a single reality bug can cause minor damage to levels. Now, this damage is promptly undone as the fabric of reality repairs itself. However, a large enough swarm can cause the appearance of void areas, holes, and other distortions, eventually leading to the widespread destruction of a level. If nothing is done to prevent it, it it's erasure. Such phenomena are incredibly rare, however, since reality bugs tend to not eat much. Even just in illustrations. A male reality bug that was kind enough to open in his wings for the picture. An illustration of the Hercules beetle taken from the book The Naturalist is Miscellany by a George Shaw. A few reality bug. Do you know the lack of horn and their gorgeous coloration? Do's and don'ts. Do left leave them be. They are harmless and could prove quite handy in the removal of corrupted realities. Alert the Meg if you spot a large swarm, a hundred or more individuals, or holes in levels. Don't threaten their nests. They have shown to be quite territorial. That's all I have to say on these darling little bugs. Farewell, oh dear reader. Do take care, and we'll meet again soon. Blonde. That was actually surprising. But because, once again, I want to continue to the talk because a 10 minute video is not quite long enough for me. And we're not even at that, we're at 8 minutes right now. We're going to we'll just go to the next entity in this list. <sighs> hmm. Helpless identify missing persons by identifiable objects. Entity ID 96, level 9. I should have checked that out later. I guess it's different here. Entity 96, also known as Neighborhood Watch, is a collection of entities resembling human eyeballs. They are at our on primarily in level 9 of the back rooms. However, they have been known to occasionally wander into nearby levels. These entities possess heightened senses of sight, but in touch with lack of hearing and smelling capabilities. They do not require sustenance and to exist, and have never been observed consuming any form of food. Behavior. The Neighborhood Watch is classified as, ex as an extremely dangerous entity to encounter due to their aggressive behavior towards any living organism they encounter. The reason for this aggressiveness remains unknown. When spotted by the Neighborhood Watch, it is advised to exit the level as quickly as possible. 
These entities are known to cause static interference in video or media, still image recordings and are capable of completely destroying visible electronic devices. The neighborhood watch consists of three distinct categories of beings, watchers, striders, and swimmers. Watchers are, are characterized by their gigantic eyeball-like structure with more multiple optic veins protruding from their surface. They appear to levitate effortlessly at walking speeds and silently glide over the suburban urban areas of level 9, searching for life. Upon spying prey, watchers emit a beam of light from their pupils that instantly turns any living matter fully absorbed into light into fine gray dust. The light only affects living things and does not harm other instances of NC-96. Victims allegedly retain their consciousness throughout this process leading to physical and mental anguish. Additionally, the surfaces of waters are highly resilient, rendering conventional weaponry ineffective against them. Striders. Striders possess eight, six eight-foot appendages composed of, of tor toroid nerves and veins centralized under the main eyeball. The main body is less resistant than that of the waters, allowing ranged weaponry to be effective against them. However, using a fire after fire assault can attract the attention of nearby entities. <sighs> Striders are remarkably flexible despite their size, making hiding in shallow rooms unadvisable. They have been recorded reaching speeds of up to 90 miles per hour, make them impossible to outrun. They are the most vigilant of the three, often seen looking into buildings and using their arms to grab beings hiding inside. When they locate a water or entity, they use their arms to grab hold of, of and pummel their target onto nearby surfaces until they expire. Swimmers, the smallest category of the neighborhood, watch earthly the size of a dog and are adapted to aquatic life. They possess a soft, flexible, yet strong muscle structure that allows them to navigate tight spots, spaces, such as pipes and hoses, with eight optic nerves Range similarly to octopi, so they can crawl out of the water, slowly chase any organisms they spot in an attempt to destroy them. Despite their small stature, they can latch onto victims with great strength and will attempt to submerge and drown them. If drowning is not an option, they will resort to tearing off exposed appendages in order to incapacitate their prey. After a kill, they abandon the corpse and continue searching for intruders. The neighborhood watch entities are considered highly dangerous. They exhibit medium levels of intelligence and are capable of tracking down wanderers and occasionally creating ambushes by leading them into one another. These entities also use the dark and the unpredictable environment of the background to their advantage, making themselves less visible. Bringing pockets into level 9 is not advisable as they will immediately alert the neighborhood watch to your location. The cause for this is undetermined but may be related to their desirability among wanderers and the exposed areas they appear in. After a trooper will pocket, either a stride, either or a swimmer will collect the artifact and return it to its original area and resume patrolling the wander. The level. No other known object exists, exhibits this property. <sighs> Multiple attempts at long-term arm surveillance in level, in level 9 using the use of electronic devices I'm going to need to look at what pockets are have resulted in failure due to the properties of these entities. When in close proximity to NT-96, electronic devices are prone to experiencing various degrees of corruption. Even group brief exposure can lead to mild distortion. Malfunctioning screens, erratic behavior, and garbled audio. Over time, electronic devices succumb completely, becoming unresponsive and irreparably damaged. The pans on such equipment proves fatal and potentially dangerous, as devices may not perform as intended, which increases the risk of being maimed or multiply wounded. The following is, an, is a multitude of tests conducted by placing streaming devices in different areas of level 9 in order to discover how they are affected by NC-96. On the far left, we have total stream time before the, 
instruction, and then we have category, device, and additional info. First off, we have 24 minutes. The NC category is Strider, and the device was a laptop. The device was swiftly crushed by tendrils. The individual style frame was presumably a spotted e device. 45 minutes, swimmer, cell phone. The device was picked up by the swimmer and thrown around the environment multiple times. It will be cut off when the cell phone was exposed to a bathtub. There was an increase in video quality when exposed to the swimmer. 34 minutes, watcher, tablet. View of feed shows a watcher approaching and lingering from the device. View feed was slowly filled with black splotches and was eventually fully covered. The retrieved device no longer functions. There was a slight increase in video quality when exposed to the watcher before corruption. 29 minutes, strider, cell phone. View of feed shows a strider picking up the device to inspect it and throwing it against the ground. There is an increase in video quality when exposed to the strider. The exact time they were discovered is uncertain, but the lost, but the lost possessed or or erased records that describe the characteristics and tell them the ones that gaze into souls. Logs, subject, NC ninety six and its corruption of electronic devices. Day February fifteenth twenty XX location level nine. Log entry. <clears throat> I have come face to face with the horrifying NC-96 with the treacherous depths of level 9. Having studied its behavior, I noticed that in addition to its vast presence and deadly gaze, this entity possesses an ability to corrupt electronic devices, further amplifying the danger of these entities. Both graphic and video of media fared no better in the presence of 96. So images captured within the vicinity of these creatures are known to be real with splashes of unnatural colors, and videos become strangely filled with static. My mobile phone has also been affected. As now any images taken with it appears burned and darkened. Subject unknown. Log entry. One 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 unknown error. Subject NT ninety six and habitat. Log entry. After further obs observation, I conclude that NT ninety six is only present in level nine and only occasionally travels towards the borders of the level. No instances of NC-96 have been documented level 18, nor level 9.1. I have not yet found the reason for this strange behavior. All three categories favor dark, hidden spots when not patrolling, showing a preference for areas with many dead ends and a high volume of homes. They are more uncommon in open areas than areas that lead to level 18. The swimming category also makes itself at home in the many sewer grades and systems that are about the level was also being able to traverse through streets by utilizing the great number of puddles present here as well. Strider simply used their tendrils to climb over any obstacles. Seeing one on, in, in a home gazing around is not an uncommon sight. Watchers, on the other hand, appear in many parts of the suburbs, most commonly throwing, floating through the streets and above the houses. Throughout my travels here, I have added a few pocket locations. While they seem to chase anyone that possesses one, they don't guard any of them consistently and merely wander around. Which I find strange. They seem to prioritize level monitoring level 9. Subject NC 96 and its interactions. Log entry. I've just noticed my equipment is beginning to fail, causing false messages to be sent. I'm planning to return to level 11 in a week to collect more tools. I've been observing the entities' interactions with en other entities. Death moths, smilers, skin stealers, and hounds fear these beasts. Watchers especially strike fear into the hearts of entities. I've seen countless turn to dust. But the closer inspection of this but us, it appears like gray sand is, un is and is unlike ashes or any other combat I've come across so far. I have also found many items such as cell phones, glasses, balls of armor, or anything that I wonder if you carries next to these piles of ash. These items I will bring back with me to help identify those who went missing in this level. I bet to see NC 96 interact with the mangled. It does not show reluctance to enter the fog uh, clouds present in level 9, but the investigation would be too risky to attempt.
And that one's broke. Do's and don'ts. Do stay hidden while carry while traveling through level nine. Carry a weapon. You can fight off striders and swimmers if necessary. Stay away from bodies of water. Keep a level head at all times. The neighborhood watch will attempt to trick you. Document all information about them in writing. Don't power on electronics in level nine. Attempt to fight against a watcher. Bring a pocket into level nine. Run by blindly through the level. Anik. Be afraid to make noise near them. Take a picture of me. One unread message. Open. Message from plants. Sometimes things don't quite load in correctly. Oh dear. I'll be reading about that later. Attachment 1. Subject cornered. Date February 21st, 20XX. Location level 9. There are multiple of them outside the closet. Don't know if I'll make it out alive. If someone gets this message, I'm it. Connection error. Try again later. Looks like they died. Anyway, now we can find out what a pocket is. Object 51 Pockets. Object 51 refers to small artifacts of crystal and metal that grant access to dimensional pockets. It's ideal for portable storage by wanderers. While similar in application to worn sacks, pockets differ greatly in form and function. Object 51 most frequently takes the appearance of jewelry, such as rings, earrings, bracelets, and necklaces. An amorphous material such as amber or opal or obsidian is almost always present on the object. It's known equivocally as the pocket stone. Pockets are highly co uh, overdid by various groups for use in operations or by wealthy individuals as a status symbol. Uses While in possession of Object 51, wanderers gain the ability to pocket non living inner matter in their proximity at will. Pocket items seem to suddenly dematerialize over your You're at the mental command of the user. It's kind of like, like a video game's inventory. Most users require direct. Contact with the target matter in order to manipulate it. But experienced pocket users are capable of influencing objects remotely. Individuals in contact with the, with the pocket display and can e, e extrasensory knowledge of all matter contained within, regardless of the artifact's history. Objects stored within pockets do not experience time, making them ideal for transferring items such as uh, items susceptible to rot, decay, or degradation. As I said, it's just like every video game's inventory system. You can think of um, Minecraft, the Zelda games that we play, particularly the more recent ones. Um, a lot of RPGs have this sort of thing. Pockets are believed to possess an infinite or near infinite carrying capacity. Hazards. Pockets are relatively safe to use and handle, so long as matter is not manipulated in a way that could be dangerous, such as materializing a heavy object above oneself. Much of the danger associated with pockets occurs during recovery or as a result of their high value and demand. Owners without the protection of a group or faction often find themselves targeted and their pockets stolen. It is advised that owners conceal their pockets at all times, and only utilize it when being 
when observed, when unobserved, or in the in company of allies. Sources and recovery. But not particularly difficult to find, Object 51 is sourced from level 9, which has produced a mountain of corpses in exchange for every pocket successfully recovered. Pockets are found at homes throughout the suburban area within safes, jewelry boxes, vaults, and display cases. Pocket bearing houses frequently have vibrantly illuminated windows in a range of different colors. Shades of blue and green are the most common, though red, purp purple, and orange are also known. Pockets found outside of level 9 are almost unheard of, but they are rumored to generate from jewelry worn by wanderers upon entry into the back rooms. Recovering a pocket is incredibly risky, but doing so in groups of three affords best chances of success. An escape route must be identified prior to a recovery attempt, ideally via grass fields leading to level 10 or by I playgrounds leading to level 263. Distance to the exit point should never be, er, exceed one mile from the point of acquisition, and all team members must be capable of an independent navigation to the exit in under 8 minutes. Each recovery team should have a designated thief lookout and support. The thief is responsible for entering the pocket bearing structure via the most discreet means available and acquiring the object. Brute force is rigged on doors or shuttering windows is inadvisable. The lookout is responsible for monitoring entry into the activity prior to acquisition by the thief. The support must be capable of assuming either role. Upon acquisition of the pocket, the neighborhood watch will be alerted and shall converge on the area to eliminate all intruders. All team members must run to the e-identified exit as quickly as possible. Should the thief become in incapacitated, the support must take the pocket and continue running. Should the support become incapacitated, the lookout must take the e pocket and continue running. <sighs> A recovery is successful when level 9 is exited, at which point pursuit cease. Those in possession of a pocket should not enter level 9 under any circumstances. That was a lot of reading. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be seeing you again tomorrow with some more stuff to read. Until then, goodbye!